Snake bites. Pros, cons, advantages, disadvantages. By a piercer. That's me. Episode number 38 coming up right. Wait for it. Now. For those that are new to the channel, my name is Dave. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I'm the owner and operator of the Axiom Body Piercing Studio, located here in fabulous Des Moines, Iowa, inside the Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking to you at a level of expertise as somebody who has done these piercings numerous times and helped people through the healing process. So let's get into it. What exactly are snake bites? Uh, bites was something that kind of came about, I'd say the late 90s, early 2000s, to describe groupings of different lip piercings. Uh, snake bites were kind of the first one to come into vogue. Back in the day, if you came in and said, hey, I want two lip piercings on both sides of my face, or I want two labrays, or I want you know two beauty marks, we'd go, okay, yeah, we can do that. We didn't have a special name for it. It was just two lip piercings or two labray piercings. It kind of became a shorthand to make people kind of go through that process a little faster. Um, if you call someplace and they go, I don't know what the hell you're talking about, or I don't know that piercing, can you describe it? It doesn't mean that they're inexperienced at in doing that piercing. It just means that they're not used to that term. It might be the person who's answering the phone is not really that uh, aware of it. So don't think that just because they say, what, what piercing are you talking about, that they don't know what they're doing. It just means they don't know what that term means. So let's get into what exactly uh, snake bites are. Snake bites are either two labray piercings or lip piercings done in a line with you at the end of your nose at the bottom of your lip. Now, they can be done with rings or they can be done with uh, labray studs. And they're two separate style of piercings. Lip piercings, which is done usually with a ring or a curved piece of jewelry, is going to be done at more of an angle, depending on your anatomy, that is outward from the mouth. While labray piercings or stud style jewelry would be done straight through. For all those people that keep saying, you need more photos in your videos because I can't picture it in my mind eye. Here's photos. Was that enough photos for you? Now that everybody knows what I'm talking about, let's move on to the pros. The advantages. Advantage number one, this piercing is not experimental or new. It is a piercing that has a long and drawn out history that dates back thousands of years of healing out in not migrating or rejecting. This is a good, good bet that this piercing is going to heal. Number two, it fits into the face. Uh, it fits into the face. I don't know how to put it. It kind of, it fits into the natural flow of the body. We like things as humans, having things on both sides of our face or something that's even we're drawn to it, and it can be very dramatic depending on the piece of jewelry you're using or very subtle and kind of pronounce more of what that looks like. Number three, can be done with rings or studs. However, as I mentioned earlier, it will dictate the angle that the piercing is done at. And we'll get into that a little bit more about limited types of jewelry that you can wear in these piercings after they heal. It's a quick healer, usually about eight to 12 weeks. It is not a piercing that is known to take an extremely long time to heal. They heal pretty quick and usually without a single issue, usually. Number five, the last one, doesn't affect sleep as much as other piercings. Because of the location, unless you sleep flat on your face, it's not going to come in contact with bedding as much as other piercings will. It doesn't impair clothing, et cetera. They usually don't get bumped as much um, as long as you don't wear like face mask, I guess. You know, it is that time of year. It's around Halloween. I'm filming anyway. Now that we have the pros out of the way, let's move on to the cons, the disadvantages. First one. This piercing has a history of doing, uh, or has a risk 
of causing damage to teeth, gums, and the bone structure of your mouth. Properly fitted jewelry and proper placement can greatly reduce that. However, it is always a possibility, largely depending on your anatomy, the type of jewelry you're wearing, and how much contact it has with the structure of your mouth. So anytime you get this piercing done, you should know that those risks exist. The first time you see any signs of any problems, the jewelry should be removed immediately. Number two, you're limited to three types or three styles of jewelry with these, either rings, uh, libre studs, or curved barbells. How the piercing is pierced kind of even limits or restricts whether or not you can wear rings or whether or not you can wear libre piercings. It's very important, and I'll go into this a little bit more too, and I'll probably repeat myself. It's very important to discuss with your piercer when you're getting it done, what type of jewelry at the end of the process, when it's healed, do you want to wear on a regular basis? Number four, this thing can limit employment. Yes, it's on your face. It's very noticeable, depending on the type of jewelry you're wearing. People are going to notice. And if you live in a conservative part of the world, you're probably going to get a little bit of discrimination and some odd looks on a regular basis. Maybe that's what you're going for. If so, this is the perfect one for you. It kind of freaks people out a little bit, um, especially the rings for one reason or another. So you should take that into account. What are your future plans as far as employment, uh, what type of social situations you're going to be in, and whether or not that piercing is going to be accepted. Also consider that most um, competitive activities are now highly restricting whether or not you can have visible piercings at all. So if you're involved in any type of sports, uh, drama, dance team, cheerleading, any of that stuff, you need to consider that they will probably tell you to take this jewelry out. Number five. I think it's number five. My count might be off today. I don't know. These piercings close very rapidly. Anything that's inside your mouth, oral piercings have a long history of closing within a matter of an hour or two, regardless of how long you've had the piercing. You just generate tissue very rapidly inside your mouth. It is definitely a piercing where you need to leave something in it at all times. It's not a piercing that you can do, take out for a couple weeks because you're going to be uh, competing and then have problems getting it back in. That said, there's always the ones that can but you need to understand they are a small minority. Now we're going to go into the consultation. What would I tell you if you came into my studio, you walked in the, in the front door of the Axiom Skin Kitchen and said, Hey, Devo, I'd like to get some snake bites. Well, the first thing I'm going to tell you is your average healing time is 8 to 12 weeks, during which time I'm going to suggest doing hot compresses, with saline solution, I prefer a sterile saline solution such as Nelmed's Wound Wash, four or five to 10 minutes twice daily. Also, cleaning the area with an antimicrobial germicidal soap anytime you feel like you have contaminated the area. So it can kill off them germs. But I don't suggest doing that on a regular basis. The inside you want to treat slightly different and it only covers that first couple weeks during which time I'm going to suggest rinsing with biotin antiseptic or an alcohol-free antiseptic mouthwash roughly 30 seconds, three to four times a day. Also rinsing with warm water and sea salt twice daily for about two to three minutes. Cross-contamination prevention. Common sense things. Wash your hands before you handle it. Try to handle it by the ends whenever possible. Really, the only time you have any contact with the piercing is when you are cleaning it or doing the saline or if you have a little bray, maybe checking the tightness of the ball. Rest of the time, leave it alone. Do not move the jewelry, rotate it, pick at it, play with it, all that stuff. No, don't do any of that. You're just asking for an infection or other problem or prolonged healing. All kinds of fun stuff. No oral contact, deep mouth kissing, or sexual contact for a minimum of eight weeks to 12 weeks. After the piercing is healed, you are more acceptable to STDs or oral sex, so be switch partners. Practice safe sex the way you're supposed to. 
Which means latex barrier until you've both been tested. Keep your environment clean, clothing, bedding, towels, anything that may come in contact with it. Keep pets away from it. Do not let them sleep in the bed with you. They're just little germ magnets. Do not submerge piercing in bodies of water you can't control the quality of. Which pretty much is everything but your own clean bathtub. That means no swimming. Totes healed. Then you can swim. Um, keep cosmetics away from the area. Anything, especially anything that's powder based. If you use anything that goes out of spray can or squirt bottle on your hair, you want to shield it with a folded up paper towel. Also do that when you see the beautician. Do not sleep on the piercing. Make sure you're sleeping on the other side or away from the piercings. Um, adjust the pillow and make sure that it doesn't have contact with the piercings. Additionally, do not share food items or utensils with other people. Make sure that your own utensils are cleaned on a regular basis um, and avoid sticking unclean objects in your mouth like pen caps, toothpicks, etc. Swelling. These piercings tend to swell. Uh, anything has to do with the mouth will do this. And you do want to cut down your intake of tobacco, alcohol, cannabis, hot and spicy foods, things extremely warm in temperature, vaping, or anything that may agitate your mouth. Think back to the last time you bit the side of your mouth or your cheek or your, I guess that would be your cheek, the side of your mouth, your lip or what have you and what burned to eat. Uh, citrus is a, a good example. Um, if it hurts to eat something, stop doing it. Also, I suggest staying away from anything that has a lot of sodium in it, like sports drinks. There's a lot of salt in there. Uh, soda, I would say the same thing about. Um, try to eat kind of cold items at first. Uh, Drink lots of liquids, stay hydrated. All those things will help with swelling. If you've never had any issues taking over-the-counter anti-inflammatories, then uh, by all means, they can help a little bit. Um, with any medication, I don't really advise it. Uh, I can't tell you to take it because I'm not a doctor and I don't know your health history. Uh, if you've never had any issues with it, it shouldn't be a problem, but I'm not going to take any credit beyond that. Don't say, well, Davo said I could do it. Now, with, uh, especially with little brave piercings, we have to put in longer jewelry to allow for swelling. You're going to want to shorten the, the, the jewelry as soon as possible. Um, if it is coming in contact and causing a lot of issues during the healing process, then I would suggest down, so seeing your piercer in downsizing as soon as possible. If it's not really causing any issues, leave the jewelry in until it's completely healed. It'll be much easier to change. The first time you change the jewelry, it's a good idea to let a professional do it. It's just easier and you're gonna have less problems. With these piercings, as I mentioned earlier, they can close fairly rapidly. So it's a piercing that you do definitely need to see, leave something in at all times. Uh, take that into account and plan ahead. And now you know. Let's talk a little bit about the difference between lip piercings and libre piercings. I have a whole video on this, so I'm not gonna go into it any in depth and I already kind of covered. Angle is very important with these piercings, especially depending on the type of jewelry that we pierce with initially or that you wanna wear in the long term. When you go in to get your piercing done, talk to your piercer. Say that, hey, you want rings. Well, and I want rings and I want them outside of my, on the outer side of my, my lip. Not into the uh, rough edge, but right at the where the entrance is. That angle is gonna do less, is gonna cause less contact with teeth and gums with rings. If they pierce it like they do normal, like you would normally do a labray piercing, which is almost completely straight on, finding a ring that's gonna fit all the way around there is gonna be extremely hard, it's gonna be very large, and it's definitely gonna have contact with teeth. You really need to discuss, hey, I want this type of jewelry or I want that type of jewelry. It's hard, they can't move it or adjust the uh, placement of the piercing after the fact. They need to know that going on, going in. Well, um, I think that pretty much covers everything I have to say about snake bite piercings. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you'd like to see more of them, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time we post it. If I brought up some question that you have or feel like uh, I didn't cover something in depth enough, please leave a comment. Um, I usually answer them if I have time. Uh, also, uh, if you have experience with having these piercings, 
tell us about what your experience was like. Uh, part of what we're trying to do here is create kind of a community where people can share information. You know, that's correct. Um, if you'd like to show your support for the channel and look stylish at the same time, check out our merch store. Plenty of things, to, designs there uh, to help kind of uh, show off your body art pride designed by uh, these very hands in those of the tattoo artists here at Skin Kitchen. Till next time, um, I hope all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see you for your piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody.